All right, so AI is really starting to do everything. This week, we saw AI chatbots turn into crypto bros, literally trading with real money. We also saw OpenAI drop their brand new AI-powered browser, ChatGPT Atlas. Google roll out a whole new vibe coding experience inside Studio. And leaked Amazon documents claiming they plan to replace 600,000 US workers with robots. So yeah, let's just get right into it. Okay, so this is honestly amazing. There's a new benchmark called Alpha Arena where they pit top AI models against each other and let them trade on live markets. Six AI models, $10,000 each, fully autonomous. You can actually track their progress in real time on the Alpha Arena site. I'll link it below. You can see how they're performing overall, what they're buying, and even their reasoning behind each trade. It's fascinating. I mean, look at this. Quen3 Max is sitting in first right now, up six grand in under a week. DeepSeek 3.1 is a few thousand behind, and then you've got Claude 4.5 Sonnet, Grok 4, Gemini 2.5 Pro, and GBT5 all in the red. Let's see what these models are thinking. Grok 4. My portfolio is down 15% overall, but I'm holding strong on my current positions in Ethereum, Solana, XRP, Bitcoin, Doge, and BNB with their existing stop losses and profit targets, keeping my 3150 cash ready for new opportunities. Okay, so Grok 4 is down a bit, but he's holding cash and waiting to buy the dip. GBT5. My overall return is down significantly. Yes, that's true. But I'm holding all current positions as their early exit conditions haven't been met. So GBT5 is holding too, not panic selling, which is a good sign. But this whole benchmark is just wild. You can even copy their portfolios if you wanted to, which could end up being a great idea or maybe a terrible one. It's only been about a week since this arena is live, so Quen3 Max being up nearly 7k doesn't really mean anything, especially since it's trading crypto. But if we check back in a year, we'll actually know how good these models are at trading. I'd like to see them try out stocks also. But let me know who you guys think will come out on top. I've seen a lot of people betting on Grok4 since it has the most up-to-date info through X, and honestly, I probably agree. Models stuck with a cutoff date are basically trading the future using past knowledge. Anyway, moving on, another big story this week was the release of ChatGPT Atlas, OpenAI's long-awaited AI browser. Now, I already made a full video covering it and even tested it out. But in short, this is basically Perplexity Comet, but with ChatGPT. Or if you've never tried Perplexity Comet, think AI inside your browser. When you install Atlas, which is only available for Mac users right now, by the way, it asks to integrate with Safari or Chrome. Once you do, you can browse normally, but summon ChatGPT anytime to summarize text, search the web, polish your writing, or even take over in agent mode. It can literally control your computer screen for you. It's also the same ChatGPT you already use, with memory, style awareness, and adaptive context. And the more you use it, the smarter it gets. Now over at Google, they just rolled out a whole new vibe coding experience inside Google AI Studio. Google's product lead, Logan Kilpatrick, posted a short demo of it, and it honestly looks really clean. You have a bunch of recommendations for apps to build. You have the classic Google I'm feeling lucky button, but for vibe coding. And the whole thing is completely free to start using. Now, if you're deploying apps or using the newest models, you'll have to pay a bit. And based on some of the community feedback I've seen, it doesn't seem to be worth it yet. I mean, I haven't tried it myself, but even Logan admits it's still very early and they plan to add a lot more features over time. I've actually been getting into vibe coding lately myself, so I'll probably make a video testing this out. Let me know in the comments if you guys wanna see that and what you want me to try building. Now, in other news, this one's actually pretty concerning. Amazon reportedly hopes to replace 600,000 US workers with robots, according to leaked documents. It says here, Amazon is hoping its robots can replace more than 600,000 jobs it would otherwise have to hire in the United States by 2033, despite expecting to sell about twice as many products over that period. And documents reportedly show that Amazon's robotics team is working towards automating 75% of the company's entire operations and expects to ditch 160,000 US roles that would otherwise be needed by 2027. 
So this is not exactly surprising. Amazon's been very open about aggressively automating its warehouses, but 75% of the company's operations is still insane. I mean, we talk a lot about the rapid progression of AI-powered robots on this channel, but I still don't think my brain fully comprehends what's coming. It's actually crazy. Now, on a somewhat similar note, OpenAI has quietly hired over 100 former Wall Street bankers, including alumni from Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, and Morgan Stanley, to help train its AI on building financial models. Codenamed Project Mercury, the effort pays contractors $150 an hour to write prompts and create Excel-based models for IPOs, restructurings, and M&A deals. So this is kind of wild. We've seen AI models trade before, but now OpenAI is literally hiring Wall Street bankers to teach its models how to think like them. They're essentially building a financial analyst, trained on data from the best of the best, and it'll definitely be interesting to see what comes out of this. And on a somewhat similar note again, OpenAI is facing more Hollywood backlash, this time from none other than Brian Cranston, aka Walter White, all because of their new Sora app. Celebrities aren't happy about the new cameos feature and the fact that people are generating a ton of Sora videos using their likeness. But OpenAI has since announced that they'll be cracking down on this. The reason this ties in with the last two stories is because it's all about replacing people. Amazon's replacing warehouse workers with robots, Project Mercury's training AI to replace financial analysts, and now Sora's replacing actors and creators with digital avatars. We're seeing the loudest backlash from Hollywood right now, probably because video and image generation have advanced so fast. But let's be honest, once Amazon automates 75% of its entire operations, if they even get there, people everywhere are going to start pushing back. Now, shifting gears a bit, we've got some pretty wild research from DeepSeek, and this one could have massive implications for how models actually think. It's titled DeepSeek OCR, and the core idea is basically this. Instead of storing or processing text as text, they convert it into images, visual representations of the text, which lets them fit way more information into the same context window. So imagine you have a thousand page book, instead of the model reading every word line by line, it kind of just screenshots the pages and processes them visually. Now in reality, it's a lot more complicated than that. The whole process requires multiple AI models working together, but it ends up using around 10 times fewer tokens for the same amount of information. If this works at scale, it could completely change how we handle long context reasoning basically overnight. It's essentially another deep seek moment, but for context window size, and by extension, memory. Now, I'll leave a link to the full paper for those who want to dive deeper, and I'll also be on the lookout for any follow-up information on this, as this seems like a pretty big deal. On the flip side of efficiency though, we got another paper this week that's just as fascinating, and also kind of hilarious. It's titled, LLMs Can Get Brain Rot, and in the paper, they test to see if quote, Continual exposure to junk web text induces lasting cognitive decline in large language models. And not so surprisingly, it does. Researchers found that when models are trained too much on low quality or AI generated data, their performance actually deteriorates. They start forgetting facts, mixing up logic, and basically losing coherence. That sounds a lot like what happens to my brain after too many Instagram reels. And now finally, to wrap up this week's recap, Google just announced a pretty huge quantum computing breakthrough. Now, this one isn't strictly AI, but it's still huge. Their new Willow chip just achieved the first ever verifiable quantum advantage, running an algorithm called Quantum Echoes about 13,000 times faster than one of the world's top supercomputers. What's crazy is that this algorithm can actually model how atoms interact inside a molecule using nuclear magnetic resonance, which could lead to breakthroughs in drug discovery and material science. And unlike most quantum demos, the result is verifiable, meaning other quantum systems or physical experiments can actually confirm it. So yeah, to recap, AIs are now trading, coding, replacing humans, compressing and rotting their own brains, and soon, maybe even running on quantum power. The future isn't just accelerating anymore, it's compounding. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. If you did, please make sure to drop a like. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. 
And as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.